and uh, welcome back to a little check-in chat. Um, I was just recently thinking about the the idea of progress or the notion of progress, because I mean, generally, in our modern times, and even for several centuries up until the modern times. We've been kind of taught, or the dominant narrative is that progress is linear, and we go from a, an earlier stage until a later stage, and we develop or progress or advance incrementally. And when we get to here, it's generally a better state than where we where we were. But actually, um, I think what's coming around again to use the pun, is the notion of, of kind of cyclic time. Uh, you know, the, I mean, we know that uh, the Hindu Vedas talked about the Yuga cycles, even the Greeks, and the, you know, the Greek poet Hesiod talked about the, the ages and the golden age, the Roman poet Ovid talked about that. And more recently, in the 20th century, the traditionalist school from René Gernon and uh, his school with you know Julia Sivola, they talked about the idea of, of cyclic time and therefore where we go is not necessarily progress. And a lot of what we see in the world right now um, is being shown to us as progress because it's a it's moving on along this time scale. But actually it could indicate the the ending of a a cycle rather than continuation and because it seems like the idea of moral progress people have talked about moral progress also advancing um, and yet morally in many ways it seems that um, we are falling short in fact there's an increase in vulgarity in a lot of our uh, cultures and societies And also, if we take this linear trend further and think that, well, you know, technology is here. If we advance technology, it's bound to be progress and therefore better. Is, well, perhaps a similar analogy by saying, if I have a headache, I will take an aspirin. But um, if I have a really bad headache, I'll take 100 aspirins. It'd be better for me. Um, so an, an extension of a situation is not necessarily a solution. Um, if if where we're going is not actually for uh, human betterment. So I think for me, the indicator of where we're going is um, the human condition. And are we moving further away from a sacred order? Or are we moving closer to a sacred order? Are we strengthening in our connection with what we may call the source? or absolute, the um, that which we may call uh, the greater, the great intelligence, the greater energy, that which is beyond us. Are we moving into a stronger connection, realization, uh, a greater integration into a, a greater whole human being? Or are we moving further into a splintering and fragmentation of the human condition? So if we're moving into a fragmentation, then that's not progress, that's breakdown. And I think all of nature works on systems, natural, natural order. And um, I would say uh, the universal order works on systems. And sometimes those systems come to a peak time where it's a critical moment. And that moment of criticality, you can break through to a new ordering, or you can break down because the the dynamic energy is not able to rearrange itself into a, into, um, a more adequate order with the energy. Um, so if we're stuck in this mentality of we're all linear progress, then we're not going to understand that um, we can utilize these critical moments.
Um, as I was thinking that, I came across a, a passage which I thought was quite telling on this idea of um, cyclic periods and not linear progress. And it was a passage um, from the life of the great um, the great teacher Ibn Arabi. And Ibn Arabi is known and recognized as a, a great teacher in the Sufi path. And um, and so the question is, you know, would he be lying about his own experiences? Um, so this is a passage which um, comes from, it's quoted in a book that was reissued in 1968 called The Darvishes by J.P. Brown. And this is um, from the, um, the life of Ibn Arabi, his own recollections. And I quote, he says here, because he was at Mecca at this, at this time, many centuries ago. And he says, when, once when I was in the vicinity of the holy and reverend Kaaba in Mecca, it happened that um, I beheld a person doing a circuit of that holy building. And he was with two other individuals, and whenever they came near to each other, a power would pass between them without separating them. From this observation, I concluded that the individuals must belong to spiritual bodies only. So I formed a desire to know who he was and what tribe he belonged to. So I fixed him with my eyes after the manner called Habzi Nazar, imprisoning the gaze. This is an esoteric technique to imprison the gaze, to transfix someone. And when he had ended his circuit and desired to depart, he was unable to do so. Finally, he came to my side and feeling that I was the cause of his detention, he begged me to allow him to depart. Remember, he was a spiritual body, not a physical body. I answered him, I will allow you to go only after you have let me know what kind of a being you are and to what tribe or people you belong. He replied, I am of mankind. I next asked him how long it was since he left this world. He replied, it is now more than 40,000 years. Surprised, I added, you say it is so long whilst it is only 6,000 years since Adam's time, and yet you state that you are of mankind. He answered, the Adam you speak of was the father of the human race, though since his time, only 6,000 years have elapsed, 30 other worlds, 30 other worlds preceded him. So, that encounter with that spiritual being from Ibn Arabi says that, well, the race you talk about is 6,000 years in your time. Um, before that, 30 other worlds have preceded it. So 30 other worlds have come and gone. Um, so obviously what we're dealing with is um, a time scale way beyond our known history, which is our known history is a linear time scale from, let's say, from the end of the last ice age, more or less, let's say, to about now, which is around 12,000 years, which also ties into certain kind of archaeological uncoverings of, of civilizations unknown to us since the um, 12,000 years ago. So in those 12,000 years, We've come to a state where perhaps we are not now um, morally and spiritually evolving unless we get past a, a certain threshold moment. And if we believe in the linear trajectory of progress, then I think we're going to be trapped into the, this material paradigm whereby we measure things by quantity 
and not by quality. And if we measure things by quality, then we have to take into account how we measure the state of the human condition, how we measure our perceptual capacities, how we measure and understand our psychic state, and how much of a sacred order are we imbued within, and how do we feel how close do we feel connected to the greater sacred order? Um, or how much are we in the profane, vulgar world? So if we get pulled into this profane, increasingly vulgar world, um, which is unfolding around us, then I think we're going to get pulled into a, a, a belief of progress, which is illusionary. And we think if we have more of this, more of this um technology to aid us and and to you know uh substitute us if we have more of this um social cultural order then it's progress but if if we actually realize that if we want more of a sacred uh, context to our lives a feeling of of um inner integral connection to a greater order then we may realize that that sense of the future is a completely different trajectory and then we'll place our attention onto that and once we place our attention onto that we are kind of almost automatically drawn away from the profane order and um and I think we we get a un different understanding of what progress means. Progress may mean that a breakdown has to come in in order to reassemble everything into a new arrangement of, of energy and the human condition. So just a few thoughts that crossed past, past my mind and I just wanted to check in, share that with, with anyone and um, I hope that... Um, we remain well and good health. Stay sane and above all, stay grounded. Cheers.